Norway, the land of myths and gods. Following the old Vikings, we first came to this land to explore its wild rivers and waterfalls. But farther north, 350 kilometers above the polar circle, there is another standing place which caught our attention. The Lingen Alps known for its steep mountains, sharp ridges and exposed lines. Surrounded by the unique landscape of fjords and little islands shaped by the glaciers. The unpredictable and fast changing weather conditions can make this place extremely challenging, even for the most experienced mountain adventurers. I am Matthias and this is my brother Jakob. We are the Vega brothers and we want to ski some Arctic dreamlines. After a dry and sometimes frustrating winter in the Alps, we were about to put our skis back in the cellar when we got a call from the Norwegian snowboard legend Krista Kopala saying that there is a big storm coming up in the Lingen Alps. We quickly decided to go for a last mission before the summer, and we made our way up north. We set out to this journey without any idea what to expect. Looking at the footage from other people riding crazy lines up in the Lingen Alps, it's easy to get a distorted picture of what reality is like on such a weather exposed place. Holy shit. Taking into account the critical avalanche situation at the warm temperatures, we kind of knew we had to aim for something which is high and north facing. So Jakob came up with the idea to ski the northwest face of Thomas Tinten one of the really big lines in the Lingen Alps. We met up with our friend Evan in the afternoon and approached the Thomas Stinden. How has your winter been so far? It's been uh, pretty good, I'd say. The winter in Northern Norway, it's usually shit, but in March it was really good. Approaching the big west face of Thomas Stinden we quickly understood that our original plan to climb up the west face was too sketchy because there was a lot of snow on top and the temperatures were already pretty high. So we decided to go up from behind. It's kind of sketchy because it's too soft for the ice axe, but still not soft enough to feel super safe. Yeah. Oh la la, this is really cool. Oh, we are on top, boys. Arrived on top, we got surprised by amazing snow conditions. About 20 centimeters of powder on pretty much solid ice enough to ski really nicely. It's very good, huh? The only thing is, we really didn't know how the conditions are going to be in the lower part of the face. And that part is the most exposed one. All right. See ya. See ya, boys. It was just before sunset when we dropped in and the first turns were just feeling amazing. Boys, watch out! It's solid ice here!
We have hit the worst case scenario, unskiable conditions with the steepest and most exposed start below us. The thing I'm scared the most at the moment is that I will go on the rocks now and then it will get sketchy. We should have known that the high temperatures transformed the snow into ice. A costly miscalculation. So we spent the rest of the night to down climb and get out of the no fall zone. At 3 a.m. our mission was accomplished and we got safely back to the car. After climbing down the last part of the Thomas Dinden North Face, we decided to have a break and wait for more snow. Doing something different to, to get the head clear and, and not having this stress of uh, going to the mountain, that helped us to stay calm. Oh, you got one! Yeah. No way! After a few days of just waiting and playing around with our fishing rods, it finally started to snow and it was snowing a lot. We just couldn't wait any longer, so we were looking for a couloir that is quite narrow in order to have enough visibility in the storm. The godmother of all couloirs was always something we wanted to ski. The only problem with that is we needed the boat to cross the fjord. Yeah, at the next house we pass, someone has to go out and ask uh, for a boat. Huh? Yeah, I, I think say. so. Yeah, so who is going to start? Yeah, I don't mind, you can start if you want. You can also start if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, rock. rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna need another sip of brown for doing that. After getting denied by several people, we finally found this old lady, which was nice enough to give us her boat. Can we borrow your boat? Okay, of course, you can. Thank you so much. Do you take, take care? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. We teamed up with freestyle legend Jakob Wester and the mission was on. It's probably one of my deepest days in the whole winter. Yeah, dude, it's up there. I actually don't think I rode a couloir in that good conditions this year. No, I definitely did not. Getting closer to the top, the snowfall just got more and more intense. I decided to go for the side entrance, also called the Xavier de la Rue line. Oh. Boys, it's gnarly. One, two, three. Okay, you want. All right, here we go. So All right, three, two, one, drop him.
After riding the couloir and looking at the weather forecast for the next weeks, we slowly started to fear that we might not get what we came for. Then a small and uncertain weather window appeared on the forecast. We decided to take this chance and set our eyes on the majestic north face of Stora Jägerbastinden, a stereotype kind of dreamline. Steep, sharp and exposed. We planned to be on the summit at 6 p.m., just in time for the short weather window. It was a long and exhausting ascent, 1,500 vertical meters of fighting against the storm. At this point, our decisions seemed to be very questionable. At 6 p.m., we reached a saddle just a few hundred meters below the summit. Minus 15 degrees, strong wind and complete whiteout. We were forced to dig a snow cave and the waiting game started. We were freezing and waiting, but the weather window just didn't came up. At 11 p.m. we couldn't handle it anymore. So we decided to push towards the summit, hoping that the weather would clear. Looks like it's getting better. A minute later, the whole sky clears up. The suffering paid off. After almost 22 hours, the sun came out. So beautiful up here. Incredible. Insane, huh? And in the end, it was the north face of Stora Jägerwastinden, which gave us the chance to do what we were dreaming of. Drop it.